This is the village of Garabandal, Spain. A small pueblo of less than 100 homes, population under 500, in the heart of the Cantabrian mountains, where a series of great phenomena took place beginning on June 18, 1961. This is a quiet village where for the most part the people engage in conversation about their cattle, pasture land and weather. The children play simple games and as all children will, they too get into mischief from time to time. On Sunday, June 18, 1961, Mary Loli Mazon, Jacinta Gonzalez and Conchita Gonzalez, all age 12, and Mary Cruz Gonzalez, age 11, slipped away from the square, the center of all town activity and, at the suggestion of Conchita, ventured a daring escapade. They traveled along this sunken lane toward an apple tree near the schoolmaster's house with a plan to steal apples. It was on this Sunday afternoon that these four very average young children experienced what was later to be realized as the first of many apparitions. All of these apparitions were preceded by three signal calls that only the children could feel rather than hear. The first apparition on June 18, 1961, took place in this sunken lane. This cross marks the spot where the lady and the angel appear. This is the pine grove where many of the apparitions took place and where the promised miracle will occur. The children on many occasions received communion from the angel at the pines. The host was always invisible. Many skeptics asked for proof that all was not a fraud. When Conchita asked the lady for proof, she was told by the lady that a visible host would appear on July 18, 1962, and was instructed to announce this 15 days prior to the event. This is the home of Conchita in Garabandal. Her mother walks toward the spot where the miracle of the visible host took place. On July 18, 1962, before a large crowd, Conchita received communion and the host became visible for all to see. This photo of the event was taken at night with only a flashlight for illumination. Today, this simple wooden cross acts as a marker to remind the world of the great place here. This is Conchita Gonzalez with her mother and two brothers near their home in Garabandal today. As you can see, she is no longer a 12-year-old child. Conchita is a nurse who is dedicating her life to helping others and spreading the message of Garabandal, as she had been charged to do by the lady over 10 years ago. The following message was the first the children received on October 18, 1961. We must make many sacrifices, perform much penance, and visit the Blessed Sacrament frequently. But first, we must lead good lives. If we do not, a great chastisement will befall us. The cup is already filling up, and if we do not change, a great chastisement will come upon us. Recently, Conchita Gonzalez was in New York City working with Dr. Dominguez, specialist in internal medicine. We were privileged to meet and interview Conchita at that time. We now translate and share that interview with you. Talking with Conchita is Dr. Dominguez. Do you remember as a little girl ever playing games which involved the lady? No, never. We never played games like that. Well, why do you think the lady chose you? I just don't know. Conchita, is your life different now than it was before the apparition? I think it's very different. Mm -hmm. However, before we were little girls, and now we're grown up. I can't say what part of my life has been different than it would have been without the apparitions. I believe they've changed all of my life. Well, do you think that if you never had these apparitions, that you'd be living the same life as you lead now? No, definitely not. Well, Conchita, have you ever denied the apparitions? Yes, I had doubts in 1967 that were very real. In the morning, uh, I was all right, believing in all the apparitions, everything. All of a sudden, I started to feel some doubts and was doubting for about three days, all except the signal calls. I went to the bishop and told him my doubts. Mm -hmm. And he told me that 
since I felt this way, I should not talk about the apparitions. After that, when people asked me about the apparitions, I told them I didn't like to talk about them. Sometimes I wanted very much to talk about the lady. But then since I had these doubts, I preferred not to. Then again, if I, I thought if I did not talk, the lady would think I was a traitor to her. But I was afraid if I spoke about the apparitions, I might be doing something bad to the people because of my preceding doubts. So you see, I had all of these problems within me. Conchita, this is Pelham Bay. Do you like to swim? I don't know how, but I would like very much to learn. Whitestone Bridge. And over there, that's the uh, the Whitestone Bridge. It, it connects New York City and Queens. Oh, that's the yeah. bridge uh, we take when we go to Long Island. That's right, yeah, that's the one. Now, now here, this is where we fish. Uh, well, I is this like the river in Garabandal? No, no, this is the sea, and in Garbandol there's uh, only a small river. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, you know, I I'd like to talk to you about the events in your little village of Garabandol mm -hmm. in 1961. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember what happened there on the 18th of June, and what you were doing at that time? Oh, I, yeah, I remember it very well. Uh, I'll never forget that in my life. I was walking and playing with the other girls, and then about 7 p.m., I went with my three friends to take apples. After taking them, we went to the lane to eat them, mm -hmm. and then suddenly we heard a big noise. Then uh, a figure appeared. It was a child of nine years old, but it was a figure of an angel, and that's what happened. Well, what were you doing in that lane? Uh, in the lane, we were eating apples. Describe the figure. Uh, it was a childlike face with a blue dress with wings, pink wings. Right. Although he looked nine years old, his body looked like a strong man. He never spoke to us then. He just stood there and appeared to us. Well, did he come again? And then did he stay there? Or, or did he talk to you? Or, or didn't he talk to you? In the beginning, he was there for three days without saying anything. But he had a sign at his feet that said, the 18th of October, 1961. The 18th of October. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. It was written in Roman letters, but we didn't understand the rest. One day, about the end of June, he told us that on the second day of July we would see the lady. The second of July? Yes. The lady came and explained the writing that we could not understand. She told us to tell the message to the people on uh, October 18th, 1961. Can you tell us what that message was? We must make many sacrifices, perform much penance, and visit the Blessed Sacrament frequently. First, we must lead good lives. Mm -hmm. If we do not, a great chastisement will befall us. The cup is already filling up, and if we do not change, a very great chastisement will come upon us. And now, can you tell us if this message was, well, was it addressed to anyone in particular? Uh, the lady said the message was to be given to the whole world, not to anyone in particular. No certain religion or group of people, but to everybody, for we were all her children. So not just for people there in Spain no. or here in America or Russia? No, no, for everybody, everywhere. Well, do you remember what the lady, well, do you remember what she looked like? Uh, she was more like a young girl of 18 or so, very beautiful. She came with a little boy at times. We thought it was, uh, we thought it was the baby Jesus. 
She wore a white dress and a blue tunic. Her hair was long and brown. He told us the message, then started to talk to us like a mother with such great patience and love. She spoke to us about several people in particular before she left, saying that she would be back the next day. Well, do you remember your reaction when you first saw her? Or were you afraid? No, no. She was like a mother. It was as if I'd known her well and just came home from a trip. Uh, it was a sensation of joy, of pleasure, expecting to see her again. She was just like a mother, a, a good friend. So then you never had fear when you were no, with her? No, never. No. Now, when you were with her, I, I read you were not aware of the, well, the people around you. No, from the moment that the lady came, it was as if we were out of Earth. We didn't realize anything around us. We didn't even feel the weather. Mm. Well, some books say that they pricked you with needles. Now, do you remember that? No, we didn't feel anything when they stuck us with the needles. But afterwards, we noticed that we had some punctures in the skin, you know. Mm -hmm. But as it was happening, we felt nothing. Nothing at all. I also read that sometimes you crashed very hard to your knees on the rocks. Now, do you ever get hurt when you crash like this? No, no. We never realized we were falling down hard. We were never aware of what we were doing. Never any pain at all? No. Now, about the message the lady gave you on October 18th, did you ever inquire about any particular part of it? Well, the lady explained about the sacrifices, and she said that the sacrifices are to be remembered every moment of the day, as we are always in the presence of God. So we have, uh, we have to do little things, like not smoking a cigarette when we really want one, mm -hmm. so that we are reminded that we're living for the good of God. Simple things, like not looking at something we like very much, or not wearing something we like. We do this for God and remember the whole day that we're doing this for God. Well, what about sacrifices? Do you ever make a special sacrifice? Yes, Doctor. Uh, we wore tight knotted belts. We were trying to do things so that the lady would notice that we were sacrificing. She noticed and smiled, telling us that uh, this was not the penance she meant, never to harm ourselves, but to accept what God gives us in everyday life. So it's just small things in everyday life. Yes. Now about the part of the message that said we must lead good lives, can you tell us what the lady said to you on that? Uh, the lady told us that when you want to know how to live a good life, you should get into yourself. Think in God and try to listen to God because he will tell you what you have to do. So, so just listen to God. Is this the way you should lead a good life? Everybody can hear God if you listen. The explanation was not for us in particular, for no one in particular, but for everybody in the world. In other words, she other than personal messages, all others were for everybody. Now about the warning, can you tell us what and when the warning will be? I don't remember the date. Well, do you remember the year? I believe it was in 1964. 1964? Yes. Well, this warning seems to preoccupy me. I'd like very much to know all I can about it what it will consist of, and where will it occur? 
The lady said that she was going to give us the best remedies to help us live good lives. And this warning was for the whole world. It will be felt all over. Garbandal, America, the whole world. Will we all know it as a warning? Yes, everyone will see it. Uh, pardon me, uh, feel it. Mm. You will feel alone in the world before your sins and all your miseries and have a chance to amend your life. It will be a terrible feeling. You'll suffer terror, but without physical pain. Will I feel the warning in the house? Yes. Or in the street? Yes. Whether in Russia or Africa? Yes, that's right. In Everyone. other words, uh, all over the world? That's right. Whether Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish? Yes, everyone will mm -hmm. feel it. Everybody in a different way. It will be felt in all countries by people of all religions. Will anyone die from the warning? No, only if it is by shock. No, no, no. In other words, there will be no physical pain or damage. No. Now, th there is another thing I would like to ask you about the apparitions. That is about the, the great promised miracle. Can you tell us what she said and when she said it? I don't remember the date exactly. Well, do you remember the year? It was about 1963, 64. She said there would be a great miracle in Garbandal uh, that God would perform for the world. The miracle will be performed in Garbandal, but it will be everybody in the world. It will be something very big, and there will not be any doubt that God has sent it himself. He will use nothing of this world to make this miracle. All present, near and around, will witness it. The sick will be cured. What about the very sick? She did not specify. She said the sick will be cured. For example, God says that Joey Lamagino will regain his sight, and the first thing he will see will be the miracle, and he will remain cured. Now, I know Joey Lamagino from here in America. Yeah, he's totally blind. Did she name him by name? Yes, Joey Lamagino. And it was on the 19th of March, 1963. Well, what else extraordinary will happen at the time of the miracle? There will be a sign that will remain for all time in the pines that you can see, photograph or televise, but not touch. A definite sign from God. People of other than your religion, such as Jews, Arabs, Protestants, will they see the miracle? Oh, yes. The lady said all present. No exceptions. It's for everybody in the world. All present at Gautabandal will see it? All will see it. Will sick people of other religions be cured, too? Yes. The lady said the sick will be cured. Now, there is another question I would like to ask you uh, concerning the warning and the miracle. Now, do you know the date they will happen? Uh, that's the question everybody asks me. <laughs> I don't know when the warning will come, but it will be before the miracle. The date of the miracle, I know exactly. However, I've been charged by the lady not to speak of it until eight days prior to the miracle. So you will tell the world eight days before the miracle? Mm -hmm. Yes. I will tell everybody eight days before it happens. Well, this information about the warning and the miracle is impressive. However, I'm sure the messages are the most important. Can you, well, can you now give us the final message? Yes, it was June 18th, 1965. The angel came and gave me this message. As my message of October 18th, 1961 has not been complied with and has not been made known to the world, 
I'm advising you that this is the last one. Before the cup was filling up, now it is flowing over. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are on the road to perdition and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is being given to the Eucharist. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. If you ask his forgiveness with sincere hearts, he will pardon you. I, your mother, through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, ask you to amend your lives. You are now receiving the last warnings. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Pray to us with sincerity and we will grant your request. You should make more sacrifices. Think about the passion of Jesus. The lady told us to pray the rosary. She also said she likes the proudest, the least, and that to be humble is the best thing. Did she ever say anything to you about obedience? She taught us how to pray the rosary every day with her and how to be obedient. For instance, she never let us come to the church when the bishop prohibited us from it because uh, sometimes the people in their excitement became uncontrollable and caused accidental damage to themselves and to the church. So she taught you to obey the bishop? Yes. She told us, for example, to obey the bishop and the church before her. Well, this whole story is very, very impressive. How do you think I can fulfill the message? And what must I do? Every person knows what he has to do. Just listen to God and your conscience. Everybody knows when he does good or he does bad. So follow your conscience. Do what God says. So you think the main part of the message is to lead good lives as was God's plan for us? Yes. So now, Conchita, tell us what you're doing in accordance with what the lady told you. I'm doing uh, nothing special. Well, you are a nurse, no? Yes, doctor. Are you fulfilling the message this way? I try to take every advantage on any occasion to fulfill the message in little or big things. For example, if I get hurt or a little injury, I offer it to God as a penance. Then I try, to the best of my ability, to help everybody around me by setting an example with my life with words, and in any way I can be spreading the word of the lady. After all that has happened in Garbandol, what are you doing now? I'm waiting for the words of the lady to be fulfilled. I'm waiting for the miracle. Thank mm -hmm. you.